Netflix, 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 another fallen soldier of this bearish sequence. Ever since the Fed started tightening monetary policy, let's dive into the price action. We'll also talk about some of my trades for the day. Before we do that, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in the video should be construed as investment advice recommendations. This is another episode of our Bathroom Chronicles. I'm actually going to be leaving New York today and heading back to the Philly area, likely soon after I finish this recap video. So let's dive in. Box scores for today, we have the S&P 500 down just a smidge, down 0.07%. We have the NASDAQ QQQ finishing down 1.46%. IWM small caps were positive, actually. They were up 0.38%, as was the Dow. And then the ARK Innovation ETF got absolutely demolished. And anyone that bought into all the high growth names yesterday, because they had such fantastic balances with these high growth names, I'm telling you, Remember this, the S&P 500 on average, it returns about six and six to seven percent per year adjusted for inflation. This ARK Innovation ETF, it can move six to seven percent in a single day. So if you can catch a nice sequence in any of these high growth, high flying names of the ARK Innovation ETF, you can do very well. And it's not like you gotta be like in it full time. You know, if you catch one of these bounces or catch a short here, this is pretty fantastic. The volatility in all of these indices actually declined. So oddly enough, even in the NASDAQ, which is incredibly weak due to those Netflix earnings, the volatility came in. And then you can see the breadth was also pretty positive, other than, of course, the NASDAQ and the ARK Innovation ETF. My trend model, it is still at a plus one. And when we go over to our indices, you're going to see that we are actually trading above the downward trend line. Look at the heat map. Let's, let's jump over this first. It might have felt like, oh my gosh, those high growth names are down. This is just such a horrible day in the market. But it was really just a pretty isolated risk off event within these high growth names. And we all know these have been in their tailspin for about a year now. And it just keeps getting more and more intense. Look at Netflix over here. It was down 35% today. This is one of the world's biggest companies, most dominant companies. And just like that, 35% off, everything must go sale. And I think that triggered a big risk off event in a lot of these growth stocks. So like Facebook, it's another big lagger down 7.77%. Uh, Tesla, in anticipation of its earnings report, was down almost 5%. But other than that, there was, there was some nice green on the board. Let's take a look over here at the S&P 500. Oh yeah, and let's check out Tesla. Tesla actually beat on their sales and earnings in the after hours. And the conference call is starting in about 15 minutes. But let's check this out. So everything was pretty much riding on Tesla. And would you look at that? Over the course of the day, we sold off big time. And now here we are, we just took out this VPOC at around 1045. So 1045 bucks per share. And we have the conference call again starting in just a few minutes. So overall, the the worst thing that could have happened is, oh my gosh, Netflix just whiffed their earnings report. And now Tesla's whiffing too. That could have really sent the market into a tailspin. But luckily that did not happen. For myself, I'm leaning a little bit longer today solely because I'm following the technical roadmap. We mention this all the time, you know, just follow the technical, stick with your plan and make sure you're getting odds on all your trades, making sure you're risking one unit to potentially make two or three. And over time, you're going to do well. And over time, just listen to the market feedback. You know, for instance, like downward trend line breaks, I want to add some more exposure. Hey, it could certainly end up being a failure and maybe we just dive right back under, in which case I'll stop out, take a few losses but I want to make sure that I am following the roadmap to a T and I'm not letting my own feelings get involved. So here we are in the after hours, we're trading at about 44.69 spot 25. I would imagine because of Tesla's results, we could see some nice follow through tomorrow, which is great. So yeah, we're back out above this downward trend channel. Let's look at the hourly chart. Hourly chart is starting to look better. We're above the weekly value area, which is great. But today you can see we couldn't really make much traction above it, which is not the worst thing in the world, getting some consolidation before Tesla, right? So you can see we're really just consolidating here. Tomorrow, perhaps we get that run up to 4,500. We'll see. 
Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was the worst performer today. And look at that. The NASDAQ fell down to the weekly value area low and it found support there. Let's check this out. And again, it's going to seem strange. Like, how could the market be up? Like, what's going on? I don't get it. And it's not always about like understanding what's going on. Like, think about it. If we were to understand every single move that happens in the market, think about how many players there are in the market. There's tons of institutions, tons of portfolio managers, tons of retail investors. Each one has a different objective in the market. And then there's so many automated flows like retirement savings, automatic investments. How are we going to understand every single day, like why the market was up or down? You know, it's definitely an exercise in futility. NASDAQ, look at this. When you're following the technical roadmap, hey, it looks like we're carving out some sort of a base or some sort of a bottom here at this monthly point of control. We'll see tomorrow if we can test and perhaps even get up to this monthly point of control, or not the monthly point of control, excuse me, is monthly value rate high at around 14,425 bucks. Let's pull up some of my trades for today. I did take an entry in this SPXL ETF for $113.71. And this is the triple leveraged S&P 500 ETF. Sometimes it's good to just keep things simple. Given that my trend model flipped positive, I said, hey, I wanna add some exposure. I'm primarily going off the S&P 500 chart. So why not just take the exposure directly through the S&P 500? So put on that triple leverage ETF. We'll see what happens there. I'm looking for a move a little bit higher over the next few days to potentially take a target on that. I also stopped out of my sedge. And this one, remember, a lot of these growth stocks are falling out of bed. This Solar Edge Technologies was one of those names. So I took my stop on this name today. And one, one of my goals for the rest of the year is I wanna make sure I'm keeping my stops you know, very tight on my trades. I really shouldn't be taking anything off for more than a seven or 8% loss. This one actually got a little bit farther than that. It was more like a 10 or 11% loss. So I wanna make sure that as soon as we break these levels, if I'm in one, I'm just popping right out of it. So this one, I hung on to it for a little bit longer than I should have. And yeah, it's just a little learning experience for moving forward. This was a one-star trade for me. It was really a starter position. But yeah, I wanted to take that off. Just make sure that's another thing. If you do let something run a little bit longer than you should have, sometimes the natural inclination is like, well, now I got to wait for it to come back. Or, <laughs> you know, you, oh man, I made that mistake. Let me hope that the market bails me out. But remember, every 20% loss was once a 10% loss. Every 30% loss was once a 20. Every 50 was once a you know 5% loss, et cetera. It's all about just keeping these small, making sure that you're not uh, getting stubborn and digging your heels in. Like for instance, look at Netflix. This thing, imagine if you bought it after this huge plunge here and you're like, or imagine if you were already long it and you held. That's even worse and you go, well, it can't go much lower than this. I'm already down like 30%, whatever. And then you get to this earnings report and look what just happened. This thing got obliterated. So it's all really just about respecting the risk. And good things are going to happen over time because right now the name of the game is the risk management piece. If you can do that, you're really setting yourself up well. But to be honest, there's not really like a ton of opportunities to like smash everything on the long side and just, you know, absolutely crush it. Those opportunities are going to come, but you know, we're in a tightening cycle. Market's a little bit more challenging. It's all about just making sure that your strategy and your process and what you're doing is viable and you're not going to get caught in these big losers. Cause look at some of these, like, uh, all these names, Peloton was down 11% today. Uh, Global E. Oh, this is one that I'm actually watching. So take a look at this Global E. This one is reaching down to the bottom end of this consolidation area. This can actually set up an undercut and reversal setup. If we break below the lows, which are at like $26 and 24 cents, I have an alert set at that level. And then we reclaim the level. That's the key element. Then you could have a squeeze where you move higher. So some of these growth stocks are getting so obliterated. You can look for those oversold setups. But make sure you're only taking them if they trigger. You're not just like catching a falling knife or something like that. But yeah, Global E, um, 
Gogo, this is a name that I traded about a week ago and had a nice sequence in this trade. It's one of my better trades so far for this month. And this one is now coming back in to support. So this one, definitely looking at this one for the future. Another trade that I actually took today was this IPOF. This is a, a Chamath SPAC. But I noticed like something odd is going on here. Take a look at what I'm seeing. What I'm noticing is like they haven't announced an acquisition target yet. But look at the volume that's flowing into this thing. Elevated volume, elevated volume, elevated volume in the last two days as well. So I'm like, did the acquisition target just leak and people are buying into this thing? So I did add just like a one star trade, basically like a starter position in this. Just in case, this keeps appearing on my scanners, just in case they announce, all right, guys, we're actually acquiring Discord. And maybe in the after hours, I can take this thing off for a nice pop. So yeah, added that. Other than that, no other like options trades for me or anything like that. Just traded some common stock. Uh, let's take a look. There are a few names that I'm watching into tomorrow. And then we'll wrap it up for our final bathroom chronicles. Thanks so much for everyone that's watching these videos. Appreciate you supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. And yeah, we'll be back to, you know, just being in the office, more like regular, regularly scheduled programming tomorrow. Palo Alto Networks, this name again, this is so resilient. All these growth stocks got hammered and Palo Alto Networks was only down 0.38%. If it does bust out of this range, then we'll know, hey, there were signs, there were clues all along. So this is the name yesterday, I was like, geez, I missed the entry. Tomorrow, hey, maybe we get another bite at the apple on this name. It's Palo Alto Networks. Uh, some of these names are really, you know, this one already came out of consolidation, this uh, HCA. This is HCA Healthcare. This one jumped out of this monthly value area. And then another one that I'm watching into tomorrow is CNC. This one is pretty cool. So it gapped higher. And then we pushed up to the top end of this range on pretty decent volume right here. So yeah, for the uptrending stocks, it's a lot of healthcare, a lot of energy, a lot of the stuff is more on the boring side. But yeah, we just have to make do with what we have in these current market conditions. With that being said, that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you guys all enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks so much for tuning in once again. If you like this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all tomorrow.